David, there's no point being coy on days such as today. Yeah. Uh, I love the jumper and I'm a huge, huge big fan of your work. Thank sir. you. It's a pleasure to finally make you acquaintance. Prefer the jumper or the work? Which are you more I mean, I would have leaning towards? I would have leaned towards the work initially, but the jumper's growing on it me. Is, it's a bit, it's, it's doing a lot, <laughs> isn't Good. it? Yeah, thank you. I remember seeing uh, you kind of emerge onto screens uh, in sort of Casanova oh, yeah. and, and Blackpool back yeah, in the day yeah. and fall in love with the doctors as much as the rest of the nation. And then since all these interesting and exciting choices since then from Broadchurch and, and, and Dares and a show called Recovery you did oh, yeah, yeah. years ago and Jessica Jones and everything. Uh, and I just hope that whilst I'm sure the, 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 there's the trappings of fame might get old at times, I hope you still get that warmth from people. Uh, that, that we've all felt and so I've certainly felt Well I certainly it. felt it from you just now, thank you. That was an excellent introduction which makes me feel very humble, thank you. So I always wonder when somebody's been successful over such a long period of time, what keeps the pep in their step, what still excites them, what still scares them and I can only imagine hosting the BAFTAs. Yeah, I mean it might do that, I mean, by the time we get there it probably will. Right now it just feels like a lark. I think it's partly because I'm being asked to do something that is that is not what I do, you know, it's not my, this is not, hosting the BAFTAs, not my day job. So I feel quite liberated by that, that I can just enjoy the sort of madness of this. I mean, it feels like a huge privilege, an honour, certainly not something I was going to say no to. Um, but I always feel slightly like, wow, I mean, they wanted me to do it. They'll, they'll get what they get. There's been some pretty big swings for the fences uh, over recent years at the BAFTAs. There's mm. been songs, musical numbers, mm. there's been raps. Yeah. Is there anything either that you can shed some light on about your night or anything that you might have vetoed that we're definitely not going to see from David Tennant? I don't think this is the moment for my rap debut. But listen, let's not take anything off the table. Let's just keep all options open. Uh, genuinely, right now, we, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, I know that we want to do um, a show that is generous and inclusive and is not. we're not interested in roasting anyone or making anyone feel uncomfortable. Uh, so beyond that, hopefully it'll just be a celebration of what has been a pretty extraordinary year, I think, for the cinema. Uh, I feel very honoured that this is the year I'm... Uh, I'm hosting, which is, I think, it's sort of arguably the year that cinema got its mojo back. Mm, definitely. Uh, it was a great year for independent cinema as well, I think, when I yeah. think there's sort of been a knock-on effect yeah. from the last few years. Yeah. Let's talk about the BAFTAs as well, mm -hmm. what makes them special and unique. My kind of era, I remember growing up watching the BAFTAs, was, mm. I guess, mostly Stephen Fry's yeah, tenure. Yeah. But then the, some of the names you can name who've, who've hosted this ceremony, yeah, Vivian Lee, David Frost, Vivian Attenborough Lee and it. Niven, uh, Roger Moore, John Mills, wow. the two Ronnies, Billy Connolly, Terry Wogan, Jonathan Ross and uh, two, Noel Edmonds did it as well at some point. The two Ronnies hosted the, the film two BAFTAs. Two Ronnies, apparently so. It does seem unlikely, doesn't it? I'd like to have seen it though. Uh, does the weight of history uh, sit heavy on your shoulders at times like this? Well, it does a bit more now you've mentioned the two Ronnies. <laughs> Up until this point, I was, I was quite glib. But if I'm standing next to the two Ronnies, I mean, that's pretty legendary, isn't it? Um, and Billy Connolly, of course. Mm. You know who is who is the dawn. Um, it sort of, again. It sort of doesn't. It doesn't. I do feel sort of a bit off the hook because I'll go back to my normal job after mm. this. <laughs> you know, so I kind of even if it all goes terribly wrong. I'm guessing you don't get particularly nervous on stage anymore because obviously you've done so much Shakespeare what and whatnot. Oh, you're nervous so when I do that. Remember. Yeah. Do you think you'd be relying on any of those kind of, uh, I don't know, the, the way in which you've trained yourself on stage to keep calm and keep things in gear? Is this going to be something new? I'll be relying on the autocue, uh, which is not something you get when you do a Shakespeare play. Uh, and therefore, I suppose the terror would be if that were to go down, because then I am on my own. You, I, what I do for a living is say other people's words rather than my own. So it feels, if I've got that safety net, I sort of, I'm quite, I'm looking forward to it. It feels like a joyous thing. If on nearly live television, the autocue were to go down, that then I really will, then I will be. Just take some notes, maybe, just in case. I, mean, I should stick something down my socks, shouldn't I? Yeah. Just in case of absolute technical failure. We're having this chat before the nominations are announced, but it has been an incredible year mm. for film. Uh, and you're going to expect some pretty big, exciting, shiny names to be there yeah. on the night. I suppose you're used to working with people like this all the time, but do you still get that 
kind of those flutters, that era of, of being starstruck and being a bit, not being sure how to be well, around people like that. It's exciting to be around some of the most exciting people, most famous people in the world. Of course it is. I think maybe there is, there is something about when you sort of recognise certainly fellow actors, you mm. sort of kind of know what the deal is and you know that, yes, they may be sort of hugely famous and influential and powerful individuals, but they still sort of go to work and, and have to use a chemical toilet in the, in the you know, in their trailer like everybody else. There's, so I sort of know what that world is. I kind of know what that, you know, I, may, I might not be a movie star on, the, on that level, but I sort of know what the experience of that is. So I suppose that, that's exciting without being overwhelming. Maybe it's more the kind of the, the directors or the producers or those mm. sort of, you know, the grown-ups in the room. Uh, that maybe the other ones that are a bit more sort of that might might make what might give one a slight pause for thought. I I'm going to be wondering what kind of toilet Leonardo DiCaprio uses now. Uh, a chemical toilet. Is a chemical yeah, toilet. I imagine someone like that might have just something well, fancier. You know, fly something in. Oh, one of those. One of those ones they have on when you're glamping and it's just like sawdust or something. Uh, yeah. Just for the smell, you never know. I mean, maybe that's what. I'll, maybe I'll spend the evening. <laughs> That's what you about do. the toilet it's habits. It's certainly an icebreaker. Of the great and the good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And finally, one, one thing we do know is uh, the BAFTA Rising Star uh, nominees. Right. Uh, there's some brilliant ones from like Sophie Wilde, Mia McKenzie, Jacob and Phoebe and Ao. Uh, they're kind of starting out on their careers. So mm. if, they, if they were to ask you some advice uh, for success and happiness in this old game, what if kind of If they're nominated for the BAFTA Rising Star Award, they definitely don't need any <laughs> advice from me. That's a uh, certainty. They're definitely doing all right. Um, no, I never really, I never really uh, offer advice because I don't really have any. I think mm. it's everyone's journey, certainly as an actor, it's so different and it's so particular to them. And it's so ab about, I mean, the only thing I've ever said to any actors ever is be nice, be on time and learn your lines because mm. everything else is kind of, is a bit of a roll of the dice. But those three things, will define you as somebody that people want to work with again. Well, I think it certainly worked out for you because people do seem to want to work with you again. Hence, oh. you're hosting the BAFTAs 2024. <laughs> and I can't Still wait. Still makes me laugh. I can't wait to see how it goes. I hope the electricity stays on, uh, uh, but. Presumably if the OTQ goes down, that means there's been some much bigger problem. And it's yeah. probably not on the telly anymore anyway. Just do what the guy at the Golden Globes did and just blame it on like the other writers or some other technical hitch. Yes. Uh, I'm sure that'll yes. go down really that well. That didn't go down very well. That didn't go down very probably, well. Probably, no. might learn from that. People will give you a little bit more rope, I think. You think?